Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another lesson. And today's lesson is a request from a fellow art student, Brother Anton, or Anton. So he asked to explain comic book panels, or could I explain comic book panels? Basically kind of like how they work, you know, the whole nine yards. So I'm going to do this. And I did explain comic book panels back in a, probably about three videos ago somewhere, but it was just like a little side note. So for this one, I'm going to explain it to him. And I will do videos on the same subject a couple times, but every time I do it, I'm breaking it down to where it's more simpler for people to understand. All right, so when you do a comic book, when you do a comic book, unlike a novel, you're telling a story, okay? So with a novel, you're breaking that, 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 that thing down. You're breaking it down. One winter morning when the snow came in from the east, it was cold and chilly, you know, and it started to rain. You know, you can't do that in a comic book. You're telling the story, but in a comic book, you have to use more pictures versus words. So basically, that's what you're doing. You're telling a story using pictures. So let's do a, let's just say this is 11 by 7 page. What's under here? Rubber band. 11 by 7 page. Messed up my 11 by 7 page. Or it does not have to be an 11 by 17, 11 by 17. It can be any size you want because I talked about um, fanzines being just eight and a half by 11. You fold it, that, and you open it up, you have your book. And I saw the other night, Travis Cherist, I think it's not, his French name is not really Cherist, but that's what they call it. He did a book, it was called um, Space Girl. Space Girl, and uh, I looked it up, and that book was like over two hundred dollars, and it was a, it was a small book, and the thing was, it was he, the way he did it. It was a rectangle book. I think it might have been I'm gonna say about this size. This was the size of the book itself, just this this part right here. And what he did on each page, I don't know how many pages it was in the book, but. The book was this size, you know, so you open it up and you have, it was, became a long book. But on every page, all he did was one giant picture. And I will show you, um, I did a screenshot of it. The guy was showing the book off and uh, I, I'm going to show you the screenshot right now. And let me, let me say, it tell you, every page he flipped, it was just one giant picture picture it was, not, it was not broken down it was just one picture and I mean it's very detailed so just take a look at it okay so that tells me and by the way that's a hard cover he showed the beginning of it, it was a hard cover book so that tells me you don't have to go by the industry standard standards if you work for Marvel and DC you know, or whoever then you have to do go by their measurements, their codes, whatever. But if you're an independent artist, you can do whatever you want to do now. Because with uh, self-publishing and, and companies publishing your books and, and you're making your, your designs for your clothes and whatever, you can do whatever you want to do. So you don't have to use the 11 by 17 uh, sheet of paper. You know, you don't have to do color. You don't have to ink your book. You can put whatever kind of book out there that you want so that's that's a relief because i'm i'm thinking about try, I, i've always been thinking about trying to do something different other than your standard you know 12 18 page book you know that yeah whatever but yeah so that that's that's a relief to know so anyway back to panels so as i say you're telling a story and in your story <clears throat> You have to show what's going on versus telling. You have to show what's going on. So with your paper being rectangle, your panels are usually rectangle or square. Now, they can be any size you want. It could be any number of panels you want. It could be turned however you want. They can be thin as you want or whatever. It's up to you to draw the panels. Usually people don't draw crazy panels because 
they want you to see and understand the picture. They want it to be clear. So most times panels are just rectangle. I put it on camera so you can see this. And this is a really good book. Jim Lee is one of my top favorites. I think he's number two top favorites. It would be um, John Byrne, Jim Lee, and um, ah, Bennis, 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 Ed Bennis. So anyway, as I say, because everything is square, and let me let me jump to um, a little something else. If you look around, if you're in a room, your room is going to be square or rectangle. That's why 98% of our furniture is square or rectangle to fit in that room. Your your sink, your your bed, your refrigerator, your whatever. You know, if, it, if, if you have a square room and you put round furniture in there, you lose a lot of space. So this is why man has decided to do rectangle furniture or square furniture to fit better in that in that room and this is the same way reason why you do rectangle and square to fit in this rectangle space now you can do and I have seen people just throw something up there I've seen some circles on there I've seen some stars I've seen you know slices like that but you wouldn't do that in for you know for every panel something like this would stand out so if I drew this and I put somebody's face in there, that could mean either the window, this person is maybe looking out of a round window or this particular thing needs to stand out more. That was it. I mean, if I'm doing a, a, um, a, um, a story about a boat or a submarine or something where they have, you know, round windows and portholes. Yeah, okay, submarines don't have windows. But I'm just saying, if it's a futuristic submarine, if it's my story, it could have a window. You know, that would be the reason, one of the reasons why I put a round in there. But it wouldn't be just, this wouldn't be the panel itself. This would be the panel, and maybe you'd see, like, uh, the frame around the window with some bolts holding the window onto the boat and some, you know, uh, pieces, rivets holding the bolt together and, you know, some wear marks or something like that. So that would be the only reason, but I have seen people just do this. I mean, these were professionals that just kind of throw a, a thing out there or a little slice and it could be done, but this would be more like if somebody's looking up, if he's talking to this guy and somebody's looking down, you know, and he's talking to that guy, something like that would work. But again, that's inside of a rectangle. So you always want to kind of do your squares and your rectangles. To make it fit now gutters I didn't know what a gutter was when I first started and um, because I didn't do it I did a, a comic page and I sent it took it to a professional who was he was at a comic book shop and the guy was like where's your gutters and I'm like what's a gutter so these are gutters these little empty lines and basically what that is is just where your trash as they say goes so if this is my panel this is one panel this is my gutter and this is going to be my next panel over here. And this is going to be my next panel over here. So they share the same gutter. Or they, they're all kind of connected to that one gutter. And so I draw my person here. And sometimes you need to draw through that gutter just to make sure something is, is sitting right, something is, is, is right, you know, make sure it's, it's, it's right, the body's right or whatever, the building's right or whatever. You just kind of keep going through there. So anything that goes into that gutter is just taken away. I guess that's why they call it a gutter because it's just where all your trash goes and they get rid of that. So you have to have your gutters. Now, how big are your gutters? Um, I, it's not that very big. Not very big. I don't know if there is an industry standard for gutter size because this one is a lot larger than these. So I guess you make it as big or as small as you need to fit your pictures inside. And I would do no more. I mean, six is perfect. Eight is pushing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because when you start putting a lot of panels in, let's just say I'll do this. 
it gets crowded and people really can't understand and you want them to be able to follow. So if this is my 11 by 17 and I put like panel, 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 panel. It, it, gets, it gets too much. It's too much. And then because they're so small, you know, you can't really draw anything unless you are just an incredible storyteller and these guys are just arguing through the whole page. But the bad thing is that your, your, your pictures will be small. You can use a stick figure. You can use a tiny figure like this saying something like, why am I stuck in this place? You know, where's everybody? And you, you have to be a brilliant writer to be able to do that, to have this whole thing. It can be done. It can be done because I'm, I'm seeing it in my head. It would work. You know, just this one guy just in this panel and he's just, you know, everywhere. He turns everywhere and, you know, trying to figure out something. But it just gets crowded. It gets so crowded. And you, like I said, you, you, lose, you lose space for your words as well. There was something else I was going to say that I, I, I lost. About to go. Oh, breaking breaking your borders. Okay, so you have this. Let's just say you have two, two panels on this page. And this is your border here and here and here. And so you have, and I, I've done this. I've seen people do this. I've done it myself. So I have a person here. And I have a person here. I can actually break this or go through heaven, and it's called breaking breaking through your, your your borders. I can have this guy here separate, and he's like flying. He's like, hi, I'm your angel, you know, whatever, and your guardian angel. So he can actually break through this, and it's legal. Let's just say, okay, this is clouds up here, so you can kind of, you'll know the background. You know that this is not the same panel. And this is like fire down here. This guy could be whatever, in hell or whatever. So this guy is transferring, trans from, I don't know the, the, the word, from heaven to hell, but he's breaking through that panel to come down. And it works because you, you know now he's coming from heaven, now he's part in hell, and, and your next one could be, you know, there talking there, standing there talking, inhale, I'm like, well, how would this guy go like this, his wings, and his fire, so you would know that, oh, he came down from heaven, and then he came into hell, and then, you know, now they're, they're talking, and actually, if you want to go do it again, you can actually have him flying the guy out and it could be breaking that breaking that panel again he's, he's got him he's flying out he's like yeah i'm free i'm out of hell now i know you probably can't understand that but yeah and it, as i say they're, they're still going into that panel or coming from that panel but you would have this up here and you know you would have to have your word balloons following and i'll get into that in a second Let's draw this thing right here. He's happy. Yay. And he, I got you, bro. I got you. I'm taking you out of hell. We're going to heaven. With his bat wings. So, yeah, you can, you can actually. Okay, so. I had a phone call. Came through the phone. Kind of messed up recording. All right, so. Um, um, word balloons, your word balloons. Your word balloons can also lead. You know, whenever you whenever you do a panel, you're supposed to go from left to right, left to right, the same way we read, left to right. But it can be, you can switch it around. Say like this one, if this was a four panel page, the way that you would have it, you would have to have your, you can have him right here saying something, then him saying something here, and then him saying, or this guy, because you go here, you leave this blank. You have to have it trailing to where you won't go from here to here. So you can have something here, and then it can go to trail to over here. And then this one, 
could be right under here, there, and then this one could go up here, and then you have these here. But you'd have to place them in a way that, okay, when I read, I'm not going to read this, and then read this and read this, because I have had books like that that have the, the, the placement was so off that I'm like, wait a minute, what, what, what happened to this? So you'd have to be able to just trail it. You know, you could maybe one here, one here, and he could be actually still speaking in in this one somewhere. You could hear and he's speaking in this panel and then drop this down a little bit so that you're you're following down here. And then this other one could be here trailing into that. So it draws your eye across, but you have to remember how much text do you have? How much words, how much are they saying so that you will have room? You won't draw this beautiful, beautiful picture of this, you know, beautiful woman. And this is not a beautiful woman. Okay, so yeah. And with her hair, oh, she's so pretty. And then she's saying a lot of stuff all over here and they cut your face off and she's talking down here. So you don't, you don't want that. You have to remember your panel size because you have to get your words in there first. And I usually... When I do, and I, I'm not going to look for it now, usually when I do my roughs, I'll do, I'll say, okay, I'll do three or four panels here, and I'll have my text basically right where I need, need it, because I've already, I already know where I'm going to do, what I'm going to do for my, my person. My person's going to be whatever, and he's going to be running away right here, but sometimes, I already know the picture itself that I'm going to draw, but sometimes I might have to shift it over, or shift it up, or shift it down, or cut some off that I don't need because this is more important in a way. You know, without you knowing he's gonna run over and kill him with his big, you know, steak knife, then you won't get it. You're like, why is this guy running and breaking a panel with a kitchen knife if I, if I can't tell you what he's saying? So, recapping. You don't want too many because I wanna continue. You don't have, you don't want a bunch of panels on a page. Uh, you can break your panel. You can take it through because I've seen a lot of people do, you know, panels and break it. And this guy's here and he's shaking his fists. You know, it just kind of it gives it more, I like a really good dramatic look sometimes. But you don't want to do it all the time. Uh, know how much you're saying. Where you're gonna place your word balloons. What is this? Um, rectangles and squares. You can use shapes, but those shapes will really kind of mess up a lot. It, it messes up the flow because you want to keep a flow to your story somehow. You want to keep that flow. And sometimes you have to do like off panels like this, but you can still break that. I can put the words up here as long as there's no real needed art down here like if this is his legs or something like that i can cover that up with you know with words if he's like aha i am here to save the day and then you know somebody's down here that did whatever whatever and then the bad guy's like laying on the ground you know he's all beat up and he's like ouch you know I, you can do that you can break that and do that sorry i'm not doing this in pencil or pen to make it a little easier um, okay, so you have to know how many panels you need in a story. Now, I know I'm not actually talking about panels now, but it is related to panels. So what I do is whenever I draw, I'll draw just a bunch of panels. Not on 11 by 7, just a bunch of, just random panels, just random and then I'll see my scene. Whenever I think about uh, a story, I see the scene in my head first. Like, here's a door. Here's the door opening up. You don't see anybody. It's dark in the room. There's a little bit of light coming through. Here's the person. Here's a close-up of the person, you know, coming through the door. It's like, hello? Hello, anybody home? This is... The door closing behind the person. This is somebody sitting in a chair. And 
and he's talking to that person that just came in the room. So I'll do this, you know, all the way through until I get pretty much to the end. Now, if I can get like six pages of this, then I'll start working on the six pages, especially if I cannot figure out one or two panels, because there are some that I say, okay, would it be best to turn him around or what's the next shot? And I can't figure that out, but I know this panel down here. I know he's getting in his car and he's driving away. So I know I need that. So, but these are missing, so I have to connect them. I'll leave those alone. And then I'll work on the ones that I definitely know. So I'll say, okay, here's my 11 by 17 sheet. I know that I want these three. Then I want this one. Then I want the two more. But then I'll say, I don't want to end it right here. I don't want this last panel to be this one. I want this last panel to be this one. So then you will have to reduce one panel to add another one. Basically, that's what you're going to have to do is reduce one panel to add another one. So you say to yourself, what's important? Now, the size of the panel determines what's happening in the story. So let's just say this. This is one big panel. I could use that one. <clears throat> this is one big panel, and I said I got a three right there. So this is my fight scene right here. This is my fight scene. The two guys are coming together to fight each other. And then this one is going to be somebody looking. The girlfriend is looking in from the corner. She's like, she's like, oh my goodness, they're fighting each other. Right? So which one is more important? The girlfriend, you know, with her, her covering her mouth or the fight scene? So you have to say, okay, the fight scene is more important. So the fight scene should be bigger. And the girlfriend should be smaller because she's just like saying, oh, no. So I can get that in a smaller panel. She's just right here covering her mouth. Oh, no. So that would be better here. And the fight scene would be better right here. So that all determines, that determines what size your panel is going to be. Also, I was going to say something else. going to say something else. That determines the size of your panel is going to be. Oh. Uh, also the size of the panel or the shape of the panel. You have different sizes and shapes of panels. Let me use this one because let's just say a more narrower panel will show kind of confinement. So if I do a, a face like right here, that can show like he's confined or basically kind of like restrained, confined, you know, in that little panel. You know, an open panel could be anything. You could, you know, like I said, the bigger the panel, the more stuff you want to show. Or I could have the panel uh, laid like this way. Just use this one right here, this panel right here, like that. And you can show um, the cityscape. Here's the moon. It also determines your angles of um, your angles inside your panels. Upshot, downshot. You remember, you know that uh, um, a downshot means. Let me do this. Let me close this panel up again. A downshot means you're looking up at something, and something it gives it more power. It's bigger. It's more menacing. It's more threatening. So if I did this here. Like that, and I did a little guy down here. He's supposed to be looking up, Brian. Down here. That would kind of make it like more menacing because you're looking up at this guy. And then when you put it in a smaller panel, that kind of means this guy has nowhere to run to. He has nowhere to run to. But if I did a giant panel like this, and I did, you know, an upshot. Then this guy's got all this room he can go around, he can run around in. It's not, it's like, okay, the guy's right there, the big guy's right there. But if I do like a tight panel like this, 
It's like this guy's like, oh my goodness, I'm trapped. Where you go? And so that you want to you want to invoke the emotion of the reader as well. So not only you, is it the shape of the panel, it's going to be the view of the panel. Is it going to be a bird's eye view? Is it going to be a straight on view? Because when you do something straight like this, you know the guy's like right in your face. You could be talking to him. When you do something um, down below, if you do like a down below shot, I did that before. Some people. Um, on the roof some somebody's on the roof and he's looking at the people down below he's safe because he's not part of that he's not part of that group he's just an observer but if he was down on the ground you know getting stomped then you would feel bad for him he's like oh no this guy's they're stomping the heck out of him. This is supposed to be more of an upshot. And these guys over here laughing at him. However you gesture with a laugh, I guess you hold your, your chest because you're getting stomped. That puts you right in the action right there because you're, you're, you're down right there with him. And the more closer you draw your, your, your panel, the more you put the reader into it as well. Panel, two panels. Here's somebody far away. Let's just say somebody's running. There's a cartoon run. Okay, so this arm would be up like this. This one would be back like that. And there's like a lion chasing that person. It's more of a cat, but anyway, if you put some hair on it, it's a lion. The lion's chasing that person, right? Far away, you know, you're not really involved, but if this guy's like close up, sweat's coming off of him like that, that lion is like right there. Then you feel, you feel that guy's pain. He's like, oh my God, that lion is going to kill him and eat him. Versus that, you kind of see the difference. It's a better lion, Brian. It's because I was practicing drawing lions earlier. Or not today, but yeah. You see this guy, and you got to have that hand right there because he's running. And of course, some of it can, is coming off the panel right there, which is cool. You know, you can't break the, you cannot break the outside of your panels. The outside of the page, that's just, that's a no-no because it's going to get chopped up. It's got to get chopped off. And then when you put it together, you're not going to see it when it's stapled and folded. So you're not going to see it. So panels, rectangle, I'm breaking it down now. Rectangle, mostly, rectangle and squares mostly to fit in this one big rectangle box. Uh, you can do shapes, but there has to be a good reason to do a different shape for that. Um... Wide panels, narrow panels, uh, shows confinement. Uh, your bird's eye view or your worm's eye view help bring feeling to the story along with the size of the panel. Close up and far shots also help um, convey uh, feeling with the panel. Okay, you can see that just because that's so small. That's so small. So yeah, that line is like right up on that guy. So that gives you that feeling that puts you there. Your panels, like I said, you can, put your, you can put the reader right there in the face or you can pull it right back and it all conveys um, feeling. You want, when, you, when somebody reads that book, your book, you want them to have that feeling that, you know, you know I'm right up there in, in Batman's face. You know, I'm a third person from here and I'm kind of like looking up, but I'm close enough to be right there with them. I'm the referee. So then he pulls back like this one, above shot. So I have nothing to do with that because I'm just an observer looking down. This one, I'm kind of close to Robin, you know, and because I'm close to him, I can, you know, I'm looking at him. I can actually be his helper. And if you see right here, there is just a black line to break that um, too. And that's what the border is for. And that's something I forgot to say. Your borders, your borders, your, your gutters are to help stop this part of the story and go into this next part of the story. So if, if you didn't have it, it kind of like with this, you could actually say this whole thing could flow into one because of the color background. And if you didn't have this book, 
If you've never seen this book, Batman vs. Robin, and you're like, why is Batman yellow and the room is yellow? That's because Batman had to take on the Green Lantern, and he knew Green Lantern's power was, <coughs> he couldn't affect anything that was yellow. So he had Robin paint everything yellow, including themselves, put that yellow paint, so that his ring would not work against him. And that was brilliant. That was some brilliant writing, because Batman could not... I don't, he cannot take on the Green Lantern. He is no way he can take on the Green Lantern. He's smarter than him. He might be stronger than him and better at combat, but his power is no way he could have took on the Green Lantern. So that was, just, when I saw that, I'm like, oh my God, that's great. Even had like some orange, I think it was, it was it? lemonade. That's what it was. They gave him some lemonade. So yeah, that's the only thing he could do was like punch at him, but you know, Batman's a better fighter. So he kind of like let him get the best of him. So again, Close up, we put we put ourselves right here. The readers are like right here. We feel the punch. We kind of pull back a little bit, and that's to, to see you know more what's going on. And then again, right up there in his face again, feeling that punch. Then third person again. We're watching. So close up, close up. Um, you know, in your face. He's pointing. You know, in your and point in your what is it? In your face like that. So that gives you that that feeling like oh he's pointing at me. He's pointing at me. So they, right here, he's up high. These are little things that you look at. He's up high because he's the boss. And then they put Batman down a little bit lower so he can be kind of more uh, docile. Okay, you, you good. And then they put him even closer and then pulled him to the edge of the panel where this breaks the panel and is going into what Batman says, which makes it more serious. So by just these little angles that you use, you can do that. Close up, close up. Uh, he did that little slash, but there's a book, Robin. You know, there's cl close up of his eyes. He's looking at the book. And again, fingers right there, close in your face. This big panel here to show off the character. Again, uh, pull back. You're right in his face. You know, so you kind of feel his pain while Batman's like back low, kind of like making fun of him. I, know, I would read it, but I'm not going to read it. Then you have a, a full shot of the body as he's leaving. Turn around, it's more of a serious look, another serious look, and then down shot. So even more serious, when Batman took his ring, because Batman is a bad, he's a bad boy, you know. He noticed, hey, you know, I got your ring, player. You didn't even know. So, yeah. When the Batman wasn't Robin, one of them took his ring. Who took it? I think Robin might have took his ring, because he tried to go after him. Yeah, it was Robin. So, yeah. Enough of panel because this is gonna be like a 30 minute video, and I don't I don't want to get into 30 minute videos. So hopefully, hopefully, you got that. You understand more about panels now. The outer parts of your gutters, you, you which is where your trash flows. He broke the panel, which is good, which is good. Things that I'm trying to tell you. He can break you can break your panel, you know, as long as you're not interrupting too much of the other one. You know, nobody needed to see the real side of his face. Same thing here. They put the words here on the side of his face. What they really needed to see was his expression and his hand on his chin, and he was wondering. So, yeah, I can go through this whole book. This is really book. This is like I like. This is why I like Jim Lee's drawing. But the fact that Batman painted that room everything yellow and had some lemonade that was just like that was that was that was good. So that's going to be it for this one. I'm going to wrap this one up. And uh, there are probably a few more points that I probably missed. But, but yeah, hopefully you got it all. And if someone wants me to do a video explaining something, then I will do that. As long as there's something that other people can get, you know, not don't ask me, oh, how to draw Bruce Lee or, or how to draw a raccoon because it's not... That's not really helping too many people to draw raccoons or Bruce Lee or Bruce Raccoon or whatever. So I'm going to call this one a day. I'm going to call this one a video. And I will see you guys in the next video. And uh, Anton, 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 thanks for always being there and giving me a thumbs up and leaving me good comments. So now remember the saying, if you're not having fun doing it, it's not fun to do. All right. Keep drawing. Stay safe. See you guys in the next video.